we see in Joseph and Mary, Mary and Joseph, we see this union of wills, this incredible desire to carry out God's will from the beginning. And it's very interesting because, man, I could go so deep right now, Brian, but uh, it, just let's say in Joseph and Mary, we see a new Genesis taking place. And in fact, Matthew is specific in this. He says, these are the origins of Jesus Christ. And that word is Genesis. And then he goes on to recount this type of new Adam and this type of new Eve. And he says, between you know the creation of Adam and I think it was the Babylonian exile, 14 generations, or between that and David, and then between David and the Babylonian exile, 14 generations, and then between them returning and Jesus is coming, 14 generations. What is that? Those three 14s are six sevens, six sevens. And that is symbolic of the six days of creation. And here it is on the seventh day, so to speak, the seventh generation, this new Adam, a type of a new Adam and new Eve, they, through their union of wills to God, this is so essential. Jesus was not born out of wedlock. He was not conceived out of wedlock. He was conceived within a marriage. Joseph and Mary were betrothed, which is the first stage of Jewish marriage. God chose that Jesus would be conceived within a holy matrimony. And so what this means is they are like the new Adam and the new Eve. And they, by their union of wills to one another, this consent to remain virgins, but yet this self-giving to God, in a sense, they drew down the word made flesh in their family, in their marriage. And Saint Paul, jo Pope John Paul II says in Guardian of the Redeemer that it was a fruitfulness altogether new, a fruitfulness of the Holy Spirit in their marriage. That is amazing. And so they, and so let's make it in practical terms. What does this mean for us? Because they're so beyond us. They became an icon of the Holy Trinity. So wow. Mary and Joseph were a, a reflection, a reliving, a revealing of the Holy Trinity. And what that means for us, that self-giving love, the Holy Trinity, that means we can look to this holy family and become like them. And that we could talk about that all day, what that means. But I think that's what we see in them. We see in the holy family, this prototype, this archetype, this way to live that's actually going to bring us not worldly happiness, but the true happiness that only God can offer. If you liked what you just saw and would like to see the full interview, click on the watch more box above or else click on the link in the description box below. Make sure to also click on the subscribe button above so as to receive more regular content. Thank you.